Today, we'll try and understand the mechanism of hormonal action or how the hormones act on uh, the target organs or bring about the physiological changes. Now, we know that hormones are produced by the endocrine glands and these are directly released in the blood streams. The hormones are very specific. That means they act on specific target organs only. So these act actually on target tissues. And as a result, they bring about certain physiological changes. Now, when we study the relationship or how they act, we find that the target tissues or the cells have special proteins. So these target tissues, when we talk, these have special proteins and these proteins are called hormone receptors. That's why the hormones are specific to certain type of uh, target cells only. So these are known as har uh, hormone receptors and these bind with the hormone. So these hormone receptors present in the target tissue will bind with hormone and they form a hormone receptor complex. So this is now the hormone receptor complex. This hormone receptor complex is of two types when we classify depending upon their position with respect to cell. Certain hormone receptors are present on the cell membranes of the target cells while some of the receptors are present inside the target cells. So the ones which are classified as the uh, receptors which are present on the cell membrane are known as membrane bound receptors. And these receptors will be present on the present on the cell membrane of target cell. They are not present inside but they are present on the cell membrane of the target cell. Another class of hormone receptor complex is the uh, another type that is intracellular receptors. Now these receptors are uh, found inside. They are present inside the cell of target organ or target cells. Uh, organ we say, present inside the cells of the target organ. So therefore they are known as uh, the intracellular receptor. Uh, there are certain nuclear receptors which are present in, within the nucleus. Now these hormones are very highly specific and they can bind, this hormone receptor will bind specifically to a particular type of a hormone. Now this Hormone receptor complex formation results or results into a series of biochemical changes. So when this biochemical changes are brought about, are brought about uh, within the cell, are in the cell, and as a result, it results into the uh, modification of the physiology and the metabolism of cells. So there is change in physiology, 
physiological processes we say or metabolism of cell and as a result there are definite changes. So we find that in general if we study the hormonal action they are actually binding with the target uh, cells of the target tissues then these target cells or tissues have specialized proteins which are called as hormone receptors and these hormone receptors are combining with hormone will form a hormone receptor complex. Depending upon the position of the hormone receptor complex, we can classify them into two types. One, the membrane bound receptors which are found on the uh, cell surface or the cell membrane of the target cell and the other class is intracellular receptors which are present inside the uh, cell of the target organs or the tissues then they bring about biochemical changes in the cell as a result there are certain physiological change in the physiological processes and metabolic activities of the cell now we can classify the hormones depending upon their uh, chemical nature further these were the depending upon the position of the uh, hormone receptors we have classified. Now the hormones can also be classified depending upon their chemical nature. So uh, depending on chemical nature we are classifying first the hormone as peptide hormones. This is classification of hormones. Now, the peptide hormones or the protein hormones. Peptide hormones or protein hormones are actually those whose molecules are mainly peptides or proteins. Now, these hormones uh, regulate specific physiological processes such as growth, metabolism etc. Now these are actually when we study they are made up of molecules made of molecules of peptides and they regulate they regulate uh, certain physiological processes such as growth metabolism etc example is insulin glucagon then uh, pituitary hormones etc there are several examples of it the next class is the steroid hormones Now, you have to understand that protein hormones are also water-soluble hormones, whereas the steroid hormones are lipid-soluble. Now, these are actually uh, produced by, steroid hormones are produced by three glands, which is adrenal cortex, then testis and ovaries. So these are the three glands or we say the steroidal glands that produce the steroid hormones. Now they actually regulate metabolism, inflammation, Then the immunity function, immunity function, then the salt and water balance, then development of sexual characteristics,
So all these activities or e all these physiological processes are regulated by the steroidal hormones. Example is we have the cortisones that is the cortisol. Then the testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, etc. So these are the examples of the various steroidal hormones. The third category is iodothyroxine, thyronine, sorry, iodothyronines. Now, these are actually thyroid hormones, which are produced by the thyroid. And that is triiodothyronine, that is T3, and the thyroxine, that is T4. So, we have two categories of hormones which fall under iodothyronines. Now, why the name iodo? Because their production mainly depends upon the iodine. And they mainly regulate, mainly responsible for, mainly responsible for metabolism. The fourth category is the amino acid derivatives. Now, these amino acid derivatives are synthesized basically in the medulla of the adrenal glands. Example is epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now these are uh, water soluble and uh, they are uh, actually are uh, stored in the endocrine cells till they are needed and they bind uh, to the protein receptors outside the surface of the cells. So here we have different types of uh, hormones depending upon the chemical nature. Now let us try and understand how these hormones actually act on the various target organs. Now, when we study, let us study one by one the working of protein hormone. Now, this protein hormone is actually a water-soluble hormone. Now, since it is water-soluble, it cannot pass through the lipid membrane. And as a result, they have their target receptors which are present on the cell membrane to which they bind. So we can take, they interact with the uh, membrane bound receptors. We can take the example such as insulin, FSH, etc. Now when the hormones bind to the specific target receptor, the enzyme adenylcyclase is activated. So let us try and understand over here. The protein hormone, which is water soluble, it binds to the membrane bound receptor. Membrane bound receptor. As you can see on the right hand side, there is a diagram, and we are taking FSH as an example. So the protein hormone FSH over here. It binds to the membrane bound receptor which is shown as filled box. So this when binds it starts or it triggers the production of the uh, or the activation of the enzyme adenyl cyclase. So this activates enzyme adenyl cyclase which is mentioned over here as response 1. This is the response. It helps in the actually the production of 
cyclic AMP. So this initiates production of cyclic AMP or calcium ions. This is AMP is adenosine monophosphate and it is important in many biological processes. So it initiates the production of cyclic AMP which is the secondary messenger. Now here this is secondary messenger. This brings about actually this CMP acts as a secondary messenger and it passes through the cell membrane and activate several enzymatic reactions to cause the biochemical changes. So as a result, several biochemical changes occur over here. Now, we have taken FSH as an example that is the follicle stimulating hormone. So it is a protein based hormone which cannot pass through directly since it is water soluble. So it takes the help of the uh, membrane bound receptor present on the cell surface which in turn activates the enzyme adenyl cyclase as a response one. And this in turn triggers off the production of cyclic AMP or the calcium ion which acts as a secondary messenger and over here with the help of this several biochemical changes take place. As a result there is a physiological response because of this there is a physiological response to this in the form of ovarian growth. over here since we have taken FSH as an example for explaining this and the target cell therefore responds to this and uh, later after this activity or the desired result has been obtained the CAMP that is the cyclic adenosine monophosphate is deactivated again it is deactivated by enzyme phosphodiesterase. Again, the cell is ready for the next uh, action by the hormone. So here we see that water soluble requires the uh, entry through the hormone receptor which is present on the surface of the cell membrane. Now this procedure or this mechanism is different from the hormones which are lipid soluble. Since they are lipid soluble they can easily pass through the cell membrane. So the second class we are talking about is the action of the steroid hormones that is, in other terms, we also call it as mobile receptor mechanism. This is shown by steroid hormone. And these steroid hormones are lipid solids. Now these lipid soluble hormones uh, such as steroids and fatty acids they can easily pass through the plasma membrane. So they pass through the plasma membrane. Plasma membrane of the target cell. Now here they enter inside and they have, they bind to the, they bind to intracellular hormone receptors. Intracellular hormone receptors present within the 
present inside the cytoplasm. Present inside the cytoplasm. As you can see over here, the, we have taken estrogen as an example. This hormone, since it is lipid soluble, it can pass through the cell membrane and it binds to the um, intracellular hormone receptor to form the complex. Now here, it will again bring about the enzymatic activity and biochemical changes are introduced. Biochemical changes take place within the cell and it in turn bring about the physiological response. So if we talk over here, uh, taking estrogen as an example, over here, uh, we find that the estrogen on entering inside the cell, it passes through the uterine membrane easily and it then uh, binds to the hormone receptor complex present within the nucleus and it then helps in the transcription that is the formation of the mRNA from the DNA that is the genome marked over there and then mRNA it codes for a particular kind of a protein and this protein synthesis brings about the physiological response in the form of tissue differentiation or in the uh, tissue growth. So here we find that the working of the protein hormone and steroid hormone is different because of their uh, water soluble nature and the lipid soluble nature. So hormones bring about the definite kind of uh, response and also they are very important for normal functioning of the body and also in maintaining the uh, regular regularity in functioning.